Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to head up to Landskrona, which is just a little bit to the north of me here in Lund in Skåne in the south of Sweden. And we're going to return to a brewery who have reviewed a good few beers from now, but I always enjoy trying the different things that they do. But this beer I'm particularly excited for. So we're going to go back to Breakery once again and we've got another one of the beers that I picked up in the Ica next to the train station in Landskrona. So today we're going to have a taste of the Picnic Sunrise, which is actually one of the lower ABV beers that these guys do. This one comes in at 2.7% and it's one of the Sour Patch beers too, which I've always found are the, the better ones actually from Breakeria. But this one should be really interesting. This one, of course, as well is brewed with Lactobacillus and Britannomyces and it's a raspberry sour beer, so should be really quite cool. It's actually very highly rated on uh, rate beer as well, actually. It was 92 overall and I think a 100 within the sour beer category, the sour beer wild ale, however you you want to call it actually but it should be a really nice beer as always i'm looking forward to it and i hope you guys enjoy my take on this one so anyway as is usual with my reviews then i'll tell you a little bit about the brewery if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that i've done from breakery before i will have some more added to the channel in the fairly near future there's all the usual social media if you want to see more beer reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beers based on country, city, county, state, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Swedish beers that I've reviewed for you. That's constantly being added to and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Breakery It then. So as I've told you before, Breakery It were originally based in Djurslov, which was just outside of Malmö, but the company is now based in Landskrona, which is kind of halfway between Helsingborg and, uh, and Malmö in the south. So the, the company was founded back in 2011 by the Eck brothers. So this is Christian, Frederick and Andre, and it's a specialist brewery in wild beers using Britannomyces or Lactobacillus. They were the first brewery in Sweden to completely specialise in this and they remain the only brewery to do so today. As far as I, I know, it's only Temple Breukus up in Uppsala, although they do a few other beers that aren't sour beers and there's also Örebro Breukus eh, from Örebro and eh, there's the Dugas Breukery as well from near Gothenburg that are doing sour beers as well. There probably are a few others out there now that I've not heard of yet, but um, these guys were the first brewery in Sweden to specialise in that and as far as I know, they're the only brewery who brew solely uh, sour beers, but they do a pretty good job at it actually. And if you think about that from a business perspective, it's quite a risk actually to start up a brewery that brews only sour beers because they require a lot more aging and uh, special care and things like that. So it would be quite a bit more time uh, to actually get your product out there first off. So kudos to Breakery for that. But the original brewery that they had was based in the old brew house in Jersloff, which was a commune brewery for the local farmers. They brewed their first beers there back in 2012 and they had a very very modest uh, capacity of only 500 litres per brew which gave them a yearly capacity of 38,000 litres. As of 2015 though they have a new brewery in Landskrona where they can produce 20 hectolitres per brew and they now have a fermentation capacity of around 80 hectolitres as well. Apparently for the first little while they were producing their wild bunch beers continuously in Landskrona but the sour patch beers of which this one is a member actually, they were producing these in Jerusalem as well for a little while with the one-off beers produced on the smaller kit as well. Uh, but they are, as far as I know, solely producing in Landskrona these days. But in 2014, Breakery it caused a little bit of a stir because they withdrew completely from Seistan Bolaget, which is the, the Swedish monopoly for alcohol. The rule in Sweden is that anything above 3.5% has to be sold in the government stores. But these guys withdrew from it com completely, uh, citing the bureaucracy surrounding the system, which has caused a good few microbreweries a little bit of a headache. It's quite a lot of paperwork to actually get your beers into Seistan Bolaget, and you have to have the recipes available a year in advance and samples and all of this kind of thing for them. So it can be a little bit difficult, but at the same time, it does keep the price down. But they said that Seistan and Bolaget were a little bit too difficult to deal with. I believe that some of their beers were still sold in the supermarkets at that time, but most of their beer was being exported over to Denmark and further afield than that. But they made their return in 2016 and they've been uh, in Seistan and Bolaget ever since then. I think Seistan and Bolaget are actually looking to change the rules a little bit so it is easier for the little micro 
microbreweries and things like that to get their more experimental beers into the shop. So hopefully that's something that comes out uh, in the next little while. But as I say, at Breakery, they're a really nice brewery. They do some really good stuff. The Sour Patch beers, I'd highly recommend. Probably my favourite beers that I've had from them so far would be the, the Swedish Ninja. Uh, Purple Rain was a really good one as well. There was also one I think that was called Sour and Salt, which I really enjoyed too. And there has there have been a few others. I must have reviewed uh, over ten different breakery beers now, and the Sour Patch ones, like I say, are the ones that I've uh, really quite enjoyed. So yeah, that's all you really need to know about the brewery just now. If you like sour beers, breakery are one of the ones that, that you definitely want to check out. But let's get on to the actual tasting of this beer itself. So like I said, this one is a 2.7% sour beer, so one of the lower ABV ones that you're going to find from uh, Breakeria and this one is brewed with lactobacillus and uh, Britannomyces and it's got some raspberries added to it as well so it should be a really interesting one so there is the artwork that you'll see there from what I understand the Sour Patch beers are the ones that have these kind of paint splodges uh, on the back of them on the background I think that's how you distinguish between the Sour Patch and the uh, the Wild Bunch beers or the regular beers this one's got the white cap with the black bee on it some of them have a black cap with a white bee on it um, just depends on what beer you've got. Here it says on the side, Sour Patch. Breakery at Picnic Sunrise is part of our collection of beers known as the Sour Patch, fermented with different wild yeast strains and lactic acid bacteria cultures. So, yeah, should be really interesting. It says on the front here, an elegant and tart low alcohol sour ale with a lovely raspberry taste. The fermentation with lactobacillus bacteria and Britannomyces yeast adds a nice complexity. So, yeah, we'll see how we get on with this one. Like I said, um, it was rated 92, I think, overall on rate beer, and it was um, a 100 within the style, if I remember correctly. So, we'll see how we get on with it. But, yeah, as you can see, and as you would expect when it's got raspberries in it, it's pouring a nice kind of pinkish ready colour. That head's going to fade away quite quickly. You can kind of tell with the way it's bubbling. That's one of the things you always have to watch with the sour beers a bit. Sometimes they can explode a little bit when you open them, but it should be um, really quite nice. But yeah, just have a look at that. You can see there's a little bit of sediment floating around in the bottom there, but as we know with beer, it's all natural, so that's nothing really to worry about. You could see there was a solid finger and a half of a frothy head on this one. It is kind of a light, almost powder puff pink colour, but there's a white edge to it. Quite frothy, this one. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass. A few little ones heading up towards the bottom of that head there. But, you know, overall, it does look quite nice. And I have seen numerous sour beers look like, beers look like this, and they oft, quite often have lovely bright colours like that, but you can see a few little bits of sediment just floating around in this one, and you can smell a little bit of that juicy tart raspberry from the beer um, as we open it up. But let's take a closer look at the aroma then, and just see how we get on. Oh, yeah. That smells really nice. It's straight up raspberries. I mean, it's just like raspberry juice. My gran always used to give me raspberry juice when I was a young'un. When I was a wee boy. Um, but I no, this one, lovely juicy raspberries. I think there's a bit more complexity to the fruit than that. I think there might be a little bit of a kind of candied fruit in there. Maybe, you know, like a sort of candied strawberry or something like that. It could just be the different sort of nuances or however you want to say it from the raspberries, right enough. You could just be getting some of the tart notes and some of the more juicy notes from the raspberries. But definitely a lovely fruity note to this one. I think there's a bit of a, a kind of bready wheaty sort of thing to this one as well. Maybe a little bit of a biscuity note. You can definitely pick up a little bit of that, you know, that sort of lemon sherbet tartness that you always get from lactobacillus and Britannomyces. You can definitely pick up that sharper, that sharp tart lemon note from these sour or wild yeast strains actually. You can definitely pick up that in there. But yeah, that looks really, really nice. It smells really nice. There's a little bit of grassiness uh, from the hops in this beer as well. Yeah, definitely a little bit of grassiness, but it's juicy fruits, mainly it's the raspberry, which to be honest is what you kind of expect. There's nothing overly surprising in this aroma, but you've got a little bit of that lemony sherbet, like I was saying, some kind of grassy um, notes as well, but overall, you know, it does smell um, really quite nice, actually. I always love these big fruity beers that you get from Breakeria. So without further ado then, let's get stuck into this beer. So this one is the Picnic Sunrise, um, a 2.7% Wild Ale Sour Beer, however you want to term it, with raspberries from Breakeria in Landskron here in Skåne in the south of Sweden. So let's get stuck in. Slange, skull. Yeah. 
that is pretty nice actually. I do like this one. The last one that I tried from these guys, which was the I think it was called Field Trip, it was a it was a passion fruit Berlin Revise. That was really nice. But this one, you know, the other one was really nice, but this one it kinda just is on another level. And I think I've said that about the Sour Patch beers from Breakery at before. They are just there's just another step, if you like, and these guys definitely claim that. It's it's a really nice beer, this one. Yeah. That's nice. I mean, this one, definitely not a Berliner Weiss. This one's more of a, a fruit beer sort of thing, I would say. So, the malt base is pretty simple. I mean, you can feel there's a little bit of pale malt. That just blankets the middle of your tongue. Maybe there's a little bit of a, a, bre a stronger bready note on top of that, but the malt base, to me, on this one feels really quite... Um, it feels a lot thinner, if that makes sense. There's maybe a little touch of a biscuity sweetness to it as well, but again, that's very minimal. Mainly the malt base in this one, for me, is just a very light, kind of uh, pale malt, if, if a very light pale malt character. A little bit of bread, a little bit of biscuit, like I said, but the bready biscuity notes are quite minimal in this one. But yeah, is I like how this beer's going together. I can see why this one is quite highly rated. But one of the things I would always say about the breaker rate beers, when you go on rate beer, a lot of them have really kind of wacky ratings, if you like. Like, I've tried some of them and thought, oh, you know, this is really, really nice. Um, but it's had a really rubbish rating on uh, untapped and rate beer and things. And I never quite understand it. This is definitely one of the ones that's a little bit more sessionable and drinkable. And I can understand why this one has a high rating. But there are others that I've thought are as good as this, like the Purple Rain, for example, or the Swedish Ninja. And this one, from what I can remember, is rated higher than both of those. I think the Sour and um, the sour and Salt as well was another one that was rated quite lowly that I never understood. So if you're looking at Breakery on rate beer and things like that, um, I would say ignore the rate beer ratings for this brewery because their beers, I think, personally, are better than, uh, than the ratings give them credit for. They actually, you know, they do some really nice stuff. And this one for me, I like how this one comes across. It is really nice. Personally, I'm not sure if I prefer this one to the, the Purple Rain or the Swedish Ninja, but it really is. It, it is a very, very nice beer. And as I always say, beer is subjective as well, so different people like different things. The malt base on this one, as I say, is a bit lighter. Hoppy side of the things, nothing really surprising there. Um, I do wonder, it's mainly a sort of grassy hop that you're getting. There's a little teeny bit of earthiness in the back corners of the palate, but on the edge of your tongue, mainly it's a little bit grassy. Around the very front curve of the palate too, you've got a little bit of grassiness there as well. And you can pick up some of that tart, um, lemony, uh, sherbet sharpness from this one, which you know is really nice. And there's also the tartness from the raspberries coming in. As I always say, when you add beer to the, when you add fruit to the beer, sorry, rather than extracting the fruity esters from the hops, it's always around the kind of front edge of the tongue. You can feel the more juicy character of the beer, if that makes sense. You can feel that the the raspberry flavours in this one, the juicy raspberries are sort of suppressing a little bit of the bitterness of this beer. So that takes the IBUs down a little bit. If I had to guess the IBUs in this beer, I think you'd be lucky to get 20, 25 out of this one. But that's kind of compensated for with the, the tartness from the, the bacterias in this beer. And I guess you can see bacteria as yeast. I'm not sure what the correct term is. But yeah. I like how this one's going together. I think there is a little bit more of a complexity to the fruit, to be honest. It's got a little bit of a that kind of candied red fruity note to it. It reminds me, I always say this in a number of the reviews, but the little heart-shaped sweets you get in the Haribo Star Mix, it really does remind me a little bit of that kind of note. You're getting that just behind the front curve of the tongue. As I always say, there's a little bit of that oily, um, a little bit of that oily bubble that comes out. And this, for me, it has a little bit of that candied um, red fruit. But the sort of sharpness from the, the bacteria in this one is just sitting inside of your tongue. But overall, a really nice beer, this one. I'm glad that I got to review this. It's quite different from the other ones that I've had. This one, it's almost, this to me, this one's almost like a a kind of sour pale ale, if you like, that's had raspberries added to it. I think that's a good way to describe this one. The malt base for me is definitely a bit lighter than some of the other ones. I don't think this is a Berliner Weiss, to be quite honest with you. 
this one for me is more along the lines of a, a sour paleo with raspberries added to it. But it's one of the really nice beers that I've had. This does it quite reach purple rain or Swedish ninja for me. This is a personal thing. I'm not sure about that actually, but it is very nice. It's not too far away from those in my opinion, but I do still think purple rain and Swedish ninja are my favourite ones that I've tried from uh, from Breakery so far. As I always say though, the beer is subjective, but this is another very very nice one. And like I said, I think the sour patch beers are where Breakery really show what they can do. I think that's probably my favourite range for them. For 2.7%, you can easily drink this beer and think it's, you know, a sort of 4 or 5% sort of session uh, pale ale or something like that. It really is a very nice beer, this one. So in terms of the mouthfeel then, definitely, you know, it's, it's quite a light-bodied beer, this one. Maybe pushing the bottom end of mid-bodied. Carbonation, it's quite smooth, it's got a little bit of a prickle to it. Overall, it's quite a wet mouthfeel, this one. It's not so oily, this. Mainly a wet mouthfeel. Very smooth hops. Malt base is quite smooth as well, but it has a little touch of sweetness. Nice juicy fruit to the beer, and quite a, a sharp, tart character to this one, both from the raspberries and from the, the lactobacillus and the Britannomyces. But overall, a really nice beer. And another one that I'm impressed with from Breakeria, and that's all you can really ask for. So, yeah, let's leave it at that. Impressed with this one? Have a go at it for yourself and see what you think. Like I said, you can get this beer in the uh, the Ica supermarkets in Landskron. I think quite closely around Skåne. I'm not sure if some of the things further north in Yuthdebori and Stockholm and stuff will have this beer. But one that you definitely want to check out if you come across it. You won't find this one in uh, Seistembolaga, of course. But yeah, another cracking beer from Breakery. So a thumbs up to them, and you will see me reviewing some more of their stuff in the fairly near future. So yeah, let's leave it at that. Once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this one in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Breakery as well. No doubt I will return to them in the near future. Check out my social media, and uh, I will catch you guys very soon with more reviews and we will return to Breakery uh, very soon as well. Do let me know some other sour beer breweries that you'd particularly recommend as well. I'd love to try some more sour beers from different parts of the world. So once again, thank you for watching my reviews and I will catch you guys later. This one was the Picnic Sunrise from Breakery in Landskrona here in Skåne in the very south of Sweden. It's Landry just now. Skull.